wow, that moon dancer, man. Just dancing on the moon. Look at that. What's going on guys? If you wanna support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well today. I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, it really does help us out. Not only that though, of course, but it does enter you to win any and all future giveaways that we will be doing here on the channel. We will be having a new one coming up relatively soon. Uh, probably in the next couple weeks here for you guys. So do keep that in mind. Subscribing is just one way that you can enter, but it is a free way you can enter. So just want to make sure you have all of that. But let's talk about today's deck, guys. We're just doing a, a really straightforward uh, Selesnia aggro kind of life gain style deck. Uh, we've got a lot of new cards here that are from obviously Kamigawa that I think would be great to try out here. Uh, and so we took this list and just kind of did our best with it and s just to see what we could come up with. Uh, and so this is very much focused on, first and foremost, the life gain aspect. So like I said, we've got that Lunark Veteran. Uh, we've got the Traveling Minister. We have the Tameo Safekeeping, which does gain us life as a bit of a side effect of the card, obviously. More importantly, it gives Hexproof and Indestructible. However, that gain to life is very important because uh, that'll allow us to throw some 1-1 counters on the Moon Dancer as well as Voice of the Blessed. Two tried and true classics that we know about. Uh, that are really going to want those counters and that life gain. Uh, Prosperous Innkeeper, of course, also going to help us gain uh, a little bit of life here. Now, why is all that important? Well, we've got Kodama of the West Tree. So the idea is that, uh, that because they get counters on them, not only do we bolster our life total, but we get modified creatures in the uh, in, as, as kind of a side effect of that that we can get in for a lot of damage and get a lot of basic lands out so you'll notice we've got you know 12 basic lands here a decent number uh, and that's really going to help us out to hopefully ramp into some more stuff uh, now some other just big value cards intrepid adversary uh, can basically um, come in bolster your board really get in for some damage it does have lifelink on it as well which is great we've got the takedown here uh, as a land and kind of a, a removal spell uh, most of the time we probably end up playing this as a land, however, there are certainly a lot of situations where you may want to use this uh, to, to get something off the board. Uh, we do have the Reckoner Bank Buster here, kind of a new include, but what this allows us to do is potentially draw some cards and uh, create some little, you know, 1-1 one -one tokens, things like that, that, that really synergize with the deck and keep our stuff flowing, because I think one of the, uh, the hiccups of this style deck uh, is that you get to top decking mode pretty quickly. Uh, and so between the Bank Buster and the Toski, we're really hoping to avoid that uh, because both of these will help us draw some cards. Uh, we do have the Wandering Emperor sitting at the top, not only going to give us some modified creatures, going to spit out some creatures, but it also exiles stuff and gains us life. So this is really like the perfect Planeswalker for the deck. Uh, we do only have it as a one of, but an absolute bomb in this list. Uh, and then finally, for a little bit of extra removal, we've got three Brutal Cathars and then two uh, Skyclave Apparitions. Obviously, both really powerful cards. We've had these around for quite a while, uh, and so just really nice includes here. Uh, as far as the lands go, we do have a Cave of the Frost Dragon as well as a Seed of the Empire. This is going to act as some removal, but other than that, it's a pretty straightforward land base. We do have a sideboard here if you happen to play uh, and where you can actually use the sideboard, but we do not. Uh, and so this is just going to be the baseline deck. But guys, this is going to be a fun one. I think uh, I think this is a pretty, pretty classic style deck at this point. Like we've had this in standard for quite a while. Uh, and so my goal today is just to kind of reevaluate, see how it's doing with some modified upgrades uh, from Kamigawa and hopefully have some fun with it. So let's jump in. Let's go to game one right now. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a keep. It's a bit of a slow hand uh, in the sense that we do need some lands to get where we want to be. And we don't really have any modified creatures for this, but we do have quite a bit of life gain. And so I think it's worth it to try and keep this. We'll see if it works. Um, let's go ahead and get that turn one veteran down. Uh, if we can draw an untapped land, that would be really beneficial because we can get another veteran down and then have this going on uh, next turn. But it looks like that is not going to be the case, which is fine. Go ahead and attack in and we'll play another veteran. 
the good news here is that obviously extra life gain is always good. Uh, next turn, if we do draw a land, we can potentially get that Brutal Cathar down, or we just get a Moon Dancer, which is actually very good for us, so I'm very happy to see that. Um, this is going to scry some cards, uh, which is great. We really just need lands, I think, at this point, so I have to scry to the bottom as much as I don't want to. Um, oh, it's a tapped land, but it's a land. I think we keep it despite it being a tapped land. Uh, as much as I don't want to, we, we kind of just have to guarantee that. That's a very safe play, I know, but I think we have to kind of be pretty safe with this. Uh, they don't have an attack in, which is a definite help. Uh, and here we at least get to do kind of the same trick again. Uh, we're going to gain quite a bit of life here as well. Uh, part of me wants to keep that. Um, part of me really wants to keep that, but I don't think we're going to end up playing it right away. So I, I think we hold off. There's a land. We definitely want to keep that. Um, and I will just attack him for six here. They can block all they want. It doesn't matter. Uh, it really nullifies the uh, Ranger class's ability here. So that actually is great for us. Okay, wedding announcement's very good, but crucially what we have is the Kodama here. And the importance of this is massive because this now has Trample. <laughs> uh, we'll throw that on the bottom. We don't need another one. Um, I think I will take that. And there we go, guys. <laughs> Wow, that Moon Dancer, man. Just dancing on the moon. Look at that. That's so nice. All right, we got it, and we ranked up. Fantastic, guys. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for our second game, and this is about as perfect to keep as we could imagine. We've got a nice one into two, into three. The hope is that we're not against a control list, uh, which are very prevalent right now, and so I do expect we'll run into one during these games, but I think this is a very solid keep. We'll see what the opponent is up to. Uh, based on their their uh, avatar here, I would expect that they're on like an aggro style deck, but it looks like maybe that's not the case. Uh, hello, friend. How art thou? Um, nice thing about this minister, it's not a very powerful card, but again, it does gain life, and that's pretty good for us. Okay. Uh, interesting. All right. Um, well, we're just going to do this. Uh, we'll get that treasure token. One thing to note, this does have to happen as a sorcery. Uh, so you might as well go ahead and do it on your own turn. But uh, unless you were planning to like block or attack with it. But all right, Sultai. Mills X cards. Okay. Well, the good news again is that we do have that brutal Cathar that's going to be able to come down. That That's a really good draw as well. Um, so we'll see what this actually ends up being. They could have an Infernal Grasp or something along those lines, but I think we definitely get that out of there. Um, and I think we just attack for two. I was going to decide if we wanted to gain life or not, but I think we are more on the end of... Because we don't have things like Righteous Valkyrie in the deck, we don't have a number, like a life total that we are trying to get to. Uh, and so it kind of works out for us that we don't have to go for a certain amount. Um, interesting. All right, well, I'm just going to go for the second Brutal Cathar. <laughs> uh, get that out of there. Uh, and again, we're just going to attack. Pretty straightforward um, so far. This Shrine deck is an interesting one and one that I fully expect will have some amount of removal here. Um, I just think they kind of have to have it. Um, but so far, we've done an okay job of dealing with everything. Just to start a creature with... Okay. They're going to get rid of that Prosperous Innkeeper. That is very good for them. Um, absolutely. So. Uh, I think we do this. If we do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and gain a life, because... Why not? Uh, we'll throw this here. Just go ahead and throw that out. Um, I think we do go ahead and attack with both. The trick here is that this will be able to like start ticking stuff off at some point. Uh, because I'm sure they've got another shrine in hand. But the, the, the problem with it is 
they can't actually do that many different things because these cost so much it's a little bit tricky for them to do it i feel like the shrines deck is a deck that's just not not as good as you'd like it to be and maybe that's wrong i have no idea that's just my take on it um but it just doesn't seem all that great you know what i mean <laughs> Uh, they can kill one of these. That's fine. It really doesn't matter that much. Um, these are now transformed, which is phenomenal. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is <laughs> this is pretty brutal. Uh, let's see. One, two. Uh, one, two, three, four. So we can pump this up twice. Yeah. All right. So we're going to auto pay twice and then just go for it. Uh, and hope they don't have some kind of instant speed thing. But regardless, these are all now like first strikers and going to be able to to throw in the the lethal threat here. So I feel like we're okay. Yeah, this deck is really good. <laughs> okay, cool. We got there, guys. That's two for two. Feeling good so far, guys. Let's jump into a third game. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. And unfortunately, this is a terrible keep. Uh, so I think we do have to mulligan. This is much better already. Uh, the, the voice of the blessed is a bit awkward. Um, I do think we keep this. The question is, what do we keep here? Um, I think we throw the safekeeping back. As much as it's a great card, uh, we've not really found opportunities that we needed it quite yet. Um, I do expect we will at some point, but I don't think this, well, this might be it. We could have, uh, just thrown a little bit, but we'll see. We've got that Lunark veteran, which is good. I'd love a white source so we could get that voice of the blessed down, start building up counters and outpace this thing. But I mean, it's a white source. Uh, okay. Um, we'll go ahead and attack in. There's no reason not to. Uh, and at this point we're pretty stacked even, but this definitely has a higher ceiling than our veteran. Uh, and here they're going to be able to get that Voice of the Blessed out of the hand, um, which is a little slow for us. It's a little frustrating. They might go for the Toski, but I don't see why they would. I think it's just Voice of the Blessed for sure. Um, that's really our big, like, th that's our answer to the Elite Spellbinder long term. Like, it just seems like the better card for them to pick here. Toski obviously does draw us some cards, but yeah, that... That seems correct, uh, for sure. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw this out. Um, I will attack. There's no reason for them to block. Um, they, they have literally no reason to, but... All right. The one good thing that we have going for us that they don't, at least not yet, uh, is the life gain strategy like we do get to offset at least some of the damage that they are dealing to us now that's not gonna save us here by any means but it is gonna help us kind of slow down what the opponent is doing at least a little bit uh and we'll see if this actually fans out or not so i'm actually gonna go for the toski here i think uh, the indestructibility of Toski is very good. It blocks for a turn. Uh, it's also going to be able to draw us a couple cards here. They could have the Wandering Emperor. That would make the most sense, but it looks like they don't, uh, which is huge for us. So now we get to rebuild our hand just a little bit. Um, wow. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. That's really, really bad. Um, okay, so they are going to get the Toski out of here. Fair enough. Um... Wow, I'm glad we did that though, just to get the lands off the top because that's really terrible for us. Um, there's really not a lot we can do at this point. This is pretty terrible. Uh, okay. That's kind of helpful, I guess. Um, I really wish we could double up on a few things, but we just can't. Um, so what we can do is Skyclave Apparition, their Skyclave Apparition. Uh, just to get an extra token. Um, I think I actually kind of like that play. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it's going to gain us a little bit of life, so we're going to go back up to 12 here. And we can throw this in. Um, I'm not going to attack, though. I don't know. I, it doesn't feel great, but at least we have something now. You know what I mean? 
Um, and we're kind of holding that Voice of the Blessed back because we know that they've got Skyclave Apparitions. My expectation is that they've got Brutal Cathars as well. Uh, and so I'm trying to play the removal pieces a little bit more towards the front end of this so then that Voice of the Blessed can come down and gain a lot. It may not work out. I don't know. Um, but I think so far we've been playing okay. So I'm not upset by how this has gone. A little upset about the land situation, but... We're stemming the bleeding quite nicely, which is helpful. I'm going to go ahead and play a Lunark Veteran. Uh, that's going to gain us some life, which is great. But then now it's going to gain us even more, uh, which is even better. Uh, because now we get multiple counters here on that Voice of the Blessed. They have a lot of mana left open, though, and I'm a little, a little worried about that. Um, I don't really know. I guess we can throw it here. Um, this would allow us technically to attack in if we'd like, uh, which I think I will do. If they want to block it, that's fine. Okay, they're going to exile it with the Wandering Emperor. That makes total sense. Um, it's a very strong card for sure, but we do still have the 5-5 backup. Oh no, they have another Skyclave Apparition. All right, well, yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, maybe that attack was too aggressive. I don't know. I, I felt like we were in an okay place to do it, but I do ex I did expect the Wandering Emperor at some point here, so this isn't a huge surprise. Um, yep. Uh, hmm. So we can block like this. Uh, just to get some stuff off of this. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have to. We just need to kill this before it can get more counters on it. You know what I mean? Um, all right. That's super not that helpful. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, life gain is good, but we're pretty dead here. Um, I mean, we're gaining a lot, but it's not enough. Go ahead and do this. Um, they can exile this now if they want, I guess. But So we just have to block effectively and then have the flyers backed up so that we can... And we need a good draw off the top. That's all we can do. We uh, Drawing two lands back to back there was awful. That really, really set us back, uh, unfortunately. Um... So we definitely just block like this. We take five. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's fine. We don't really have non-creature spells, so that doesn't actually matter that much. Um, Kodama's not that good here, unfortunately. Uh, we don't really have a lot. We have no modified creatures. Um, and at this point, we're pretty screwed, so... <laughs> All right, we'll throw the, the Luminous Phantom out. Again, we're like slow. We're hanging in there, but not by much. Uh, truthfully, we should have probably gained a life there, but the we just don't have anything. You know what I mean? Like if we had a... We have a Wandering Emperor. If we had gotten a Wandering Emperor, we could have thrown that down, exiled that Elite Spellbinder, been in a much cleaner position. Uh, and been able to theoretically kind of at least stabilize a little bit. But, I mean, as it stands, they are uh, wrecking us here. They've just had better draws. I mean, there's there's nothing else to it. They just have better draws right now. Very clever of them to throw that counter here. Uh, so that way we can't block with the Kodama. The Kodama, excuse me. And it looks like they are going to go pretty much all out here. So we definitely block here. We definitely block here. I think we just let that happen. Sadly, again, we missed out on a point of life because we didn't tap that uh, traveling minister, which we should have. Um, but, I mean, it is what it is, you know? Bankbuster. Um, I mean, it's something, but I think it's a little bit late, you know? Oh, that's not what I meant. Um, definitely a little too late I, I just don't see us drawing anything a brutal cathar would be helpful but not enough 
and they also just get to destroy this if they want. They're really deciding if they want to, though. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this is so bad, guys. So, so bad. All right. I mean, we're gaining all the life we can, you know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't really matter where we put this. Um, this is so bad. I think we're just wrecked. Like, we're hanging in there, but by a thread. And at this point, like, they have to be able to just kill us. All the land in the world and nothing to do with it, sadly. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This has been rough. All right. So good. Uh, okay. Let's block here. Let's block here. We take four. Yep. I mean, this is just the grindiest, worst game I think I've I've played in a long time. It's so not fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toski would be great, but it's just not. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and concede here. There's just no way we got it. It's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about this deck. All right, so Selesnia aggro, kind of mid-rangey deck, but definitely on the aggro end. Uh, we saw it get outpaced there by the mono white, um, and I think that that kind of makes sense. I think they get more aggressive than we are. Uh, we've got that life gain aspect to kind of to, to kind of make up for that lack of aggro. Um, however, it, you could see it really didn't pan out in that game. Now, I do think, I think if we had gotten anything playable, <laughs> like if we had Skyclave Apparitions, we had Brutal Cathars, we had the Wandering Emperor, I know only as a one of, but we had a lot of stuff that would have helped us out. We just didn't get there. Uh, we, we drew a couple lands off of the, uh, Toski there, which was really unfortunate, uh, and then just didn't really get anything else that was useful. We got a lot of Prosperous Innkeepers, uh, we got a lot of little things, but nothing that really did the damage. So, all that to say, this deck is good, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't focus on that modified as heavily as some of the other decks we've played, the more dedicated modified decks. Uh, but it does have that sub theme. It's got that life gain sub theme, and then of course just the counters and like build up of uh, the Moon Dancer and the uh, the Voice of the Blessed. So all in all, I think it's a good deck. It just didn't work out in that last game, but we still ended the record with a two and one, and that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you would. That would really help us out a lot. But I love you guys very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you again very soon.